Hey YouTube, Mark Kaufman here, and today is the day I am going to be comparing the Wenger Handyman to the Victorinox Fieldmaster. Now this is a comparison that I mentioned I was going to make in a past video, and finally I have found some time to do it. And in this comparison, I am actually going to go and measure out the differences between each one of these knives. So first off, we're going to look at the length of the handles. And what we've got is essentially 91 millimeters. I do need to replace the battery on that, so that's why it's blinking. Sorry about that. And then we've got 84 millimeters. So definitely a, a, a difference in size here. And what that means is a different... Um, lifestyle in the pocket. For me personally, I find this one to be a joy to carry in the pocket. However, I don't carry this one. Um, I carry a Forester in my pocket and this one stays in a case. So this one is in very mint shape and I picked it up for a very small amount of money. So the reason for that is it's going to stay in a nice case. So next up is going to be, you know what, we'll go downward is going to be the can opener and Victorinox the story between these can openers are it, it's a very interesting story originally Victorinox was using this can opener and Wenger was using a different styled can opener probably the older lobster claw style um, and what ended up happening is Victorinox created this can opener and put a patent on it. And what they ended up doing is they gave their can opener parts and tooling to Wenger. So this is essentially a slightly modified version of what Victorinox used to have on their knives. So it's kind of nice that Victorinox shared some of their tooling with them. So with this one though, you get a small flathead Phillips driver. This one is just going to be a can opener, but it does make a nice box opener or defensive weapon. Now the cap lifter. Now this cap lifter is very interesting. It has a mechanism within it where if you press against it, it's going to lock into place and actually compress into the handle slightly. And what that means is this is not going to be closing on you when compressed in that way. When it comes to Victorinox's, they've gone the slip joint route and they've added a slight divot here to aid in locking this into place. Now what you're going to get is a bigger cap lifter with the Victorinox. And let's just really quick measure the width here. So we've got 8.2 and then we've got Mm, 8.5 so yeah it looked it looked like this one was going to be taller but we've actually got a little more height here but there's definitely more length in the Victorinox's model okay now to one of the tools that really is interesting to see because they've also gone in a different route of the order of tools so next up on the Victorinox is actually going to be the scissors, whereas on the Wenger, it next up is going to be the saw. We're not going to compare the saw against the scissors here, so I've got to skip that and go to the scissors. Now, it's a funny story with Victorinox. Victorinox used to make an 84 millimeter scissor, and those scissors have since ceased production, primarily because the machining uh, broke down and Victorinox didn't feel the need to actually fix it. So what they did is they just ceased production on the 84 millimeter scissors. So all we've got now is 74 millimeter, 58 millimeter and the 91 millimeter. Unfortunately, I wish um, I had a 84 millimeter to compare to this one, but those models are getting more and more expensive. So size is going to be a little different here but also what's different is going to be the system in which the spring interacts with the scissors so 
Wenger uses this cam system, which is kind of a double spring system that works on the back spring here. And it's effective, however, it gets very gummy. Uh, if you get any kind of sludge tape or um, grease or anything in this, it becomes a very gummy setup and it will not open and close as smoothly as the Victorinox scissors. I still prefer Victorinox scissors, however, these have small, mild, uh, well not mild, but they have small serrations in the scissors edge and they claim that they self sharpen, I, I don't buy it, but personally it does do a good job cutting paper, but it doesn't do a very good job cutting very heavy fibrous materials. So. We're going to close that up. I'm going to try and get this saw back out so I can review it. And this is kind of another difference here, and I'm going to have to mention it. But on the Wenger saw, you actually access it through a nail nick. So you've got that at the very end there. And over here, you access, the, you access this at the very end end of the knife so you just have to grab this tip here and there you go so because you have a smaller handle you're gonna have a smaller saw and personally the Wenger saw is not bad it is a very effective cutting tool when it comes to I'm um, cutting into wood plastics um, mild piping and I have found it to be very very um, compatible to the Victorinox except you just don't have the length so here you've got 64 millimeters excuse me there hit the side of my studio here and then we've got 72 there so you do have a difference in length there but you also have a difference in the teeth style now you would think the Wenger wouldn't do very good because of the distance in between the teeth and Victorinox has a tighter distance and they also have what it looks like a small section of teeth there but it's actually just the blade edge of the tooth of the saw there so it's not a like double serrated saw they're both very good i find the victorinox's length to be a benefit let me zoom out here close this up now we could go to the main blades now Wenger ended up going with kind of a spear point bellied blade and then Victorinox went with a slimmer blade and I actually really do like the Victorinox one I find it easier to sharpen you just have to keep this edge angle straight and then kind of round off the tip and there you go this one here you have a small slight section here that is going to be slightly straight and then you've got this nice belly here and then you've got the point and for me personally yes having that belly is good keeps fibrous materials right in here for cutting but I do prefer the Victorinox now when it comes to the pen blade the Wenger does not have it they have forgoed the pen blade and they've gone with a nail file. Personally, I wish Victorinox would just do this on all of their models. Um, I, I don't use the small blade all that much unless it's like a utility purpose. The small fingernail file is really nice to have and it's just another tool and you've got a small Phillips head driver here that you could possibly use if need be. Now, finally, we can go to the back side here and the Wenger is different yet again compared to the Victorinox. Victorinox has added a parcel hook in between the two primary tools on the back and for the life of me I cannot get this thing out. There we go. So the parcel hook enabled you to carry parcels on the string a little more easily. I use it to open up drawers that are kind of um, hard to open and if they don't have a knob on them. Then we've got the Wenger style awl, which I prefer. 
Uh, I, I do find the Victorinox all to be effective, but it's kind of a pain to open. One of the great things about Vanger is they gave you this nice cutout here and you can just grab that and there you go. No fiddling. Whereas Victorinox, you kind of have to get right in that crevice there and get it open. Now, Victorinox has recently added a sewing eye to their awls and Vanger has not. Well, Vanger has been bought by Victorinox and Victorinox is not producing this all anymore. So there is a sad point to that, but I do prefer this because it just, it does a very good job of piercing. You can still do pretty much everything this one does just as well with this one, but you just get a little more reach. Then to the Phillips driver, we've got that Phillips, and then we have the Victorinox Phillips. And we're gonna see who has the thicker one. We've got five millimeters thick, and then we've got 5.5 millimeters thick. So there is a little bit of a difference in the thickness However, I have found that they both do a sizable job, but the Victorinox, for some reason, is able to latch on to small Phillips heads more easily than the Vanger. I, I just don't get it, and the Vanger does seem to or tend to slip in use. And I, I don't know if that's because it's kind of rounded at the end there or on the edges, but when it came to the Victorinox model, you have these really nice, flat, grippy edges that will grab onto any screw that you are unscrewing. So there is that comparison. And then when it comes to the toothpick and tweezers, Victorinox has outboard and Vanger has inboard tweezers and toothpicks. And then, as you can see there, Vanger gave you this little chain, which is made out of a... Um, a base metal material. It's actually very soft. I would not count on this to hang off of your backpack. I would probably take this and then put it on and then remove the chain. But it gives you a little bit of distance here if you wanted to add it to your keys. Don't know why you would add such a large knife to those. And then Victorinox gives you this single key ring. So that is the comparison between the Fieldmaster and the Handyman. Um, they're both very different knives. They both have goods and bads about them. But personally, if I had to carry one, I would probably go with the Vanger just because it's going to be smaller in the pocket. That really is the only reason. Other than that, I would probably be going with the Victorinox any other day. But if you're talking about convenience and size, Victorinox has Victorinox. Uh, <laughs> Vanger has Victorinox beat in that realm. So thank you guys again for checking out my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison and all the measurements and everything like that. So till the next one, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.